Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Bitcoin report for Tuesday the 18th of January. Apologies for getting double voiceover on the last video. So let's go back over all that again and um, yeah, mull a few things over. So I know a lot of folks think that um, there's a low in place uh, and then the market's going to go up from that point and uh, um, and they could be correct, and we'll have a bit of a look at that. But this is the CME futures, Bitcoin futures here. And uh, as I've mentioned uh, before, is that we can see that we've got a very clear five wave structure down for wave one, and then we've got a corrective rally. And then from here to here, we can see that we've got another nice five waves down with a nice strong third wave in the middle here. So uh, that's okay. And then we know we've got a fourth wave here. And then we've got a fifth wave here. So this fifth wave here, we can see that we've got a nice wave one and two in here, nice strong third wave here. So we're looking for the fourth wave here. The fourth wave has bounced a little bit higher than the 38.2, but you know, when markets hit large numbers like this, you know, we can see the volume come in for that. And as that's moved up there, we can also see the volumes diminished at that point as well. But that's okay really for a wave one to do that. Actually, that's what a wave one would sort of normally do. So I can't take the vol. I can't be too too hard on on on, on that uh, on that basis. But it does look like uh, one and two and three here. You can squeeze five waves out of all of that, but um, to give it a little bit of space, it would be uh, nice to see it have one more move down. Not that it's a big deal because you can just go long above these highs, and we can talk about that. But the point of showing you this is that. Well, this is five waves coming to the downside here. Now, <clears throat> it's when when Bitcoin had that big spike that came down, and this is the futures market, which obviously doesn't trade uh, over the weekend when that big spike, which was really just, you know, one order. Um, and with big spikes in the market, I don't really pay a lot of attention to it. Yes, they're real, they happened, and they take stops and profits and all the rest of it. Um, but in terms of analysis, uh, I really like to follow the traffic, the volume and all of that, because it recovered really quite quickly. Uh, you know, we're down within a day and it came back in that space as well. And uh, yeah, so taking that out of the equation, we're really left with a nice five wave structure here. And I know that because of that particular spike that came down, then you can start to do all weird sorts of counts. Not that they're weird, but all the WXY counts. And, and I've labeled that myself uh, in that particular way. We can have a low in here as a wave one top and, and, and a move down for wave two here and we can go up from that point. But I you know, I feel like it's sort of buying a little bit of hope, really. Um, you know, I'm bullish and, you know, I mean, I've got four or five you know, Bitcoin. So, you know, I'm, I, you know, <laughs> you know, I mean, sure, I'd like to see it, you know, go, go up. So don't get me wrong. I'm not uh, I, I don't try to be bearish or bullish. I just try to stay with the with the evidence according to my brain cells, you know. Um, and I and I just sort of see five waves here. Um, so it's possible that we could have a running flat correction. And I'll we'll, when we go to the another chart, I'll, we'll look at that. But you know, if we've got five waves down here, then we really should have a corrective move as an ABC coming back to the 50, 60%. So even if that is the low, let's just say that it is for a moment, you know, uh, we don't get another move down. And if we do get another move down, it'll just go into, it won't leave the, it won't leave the, uh, the, the 4,000, uh, here, uh, the 40,000 uh, very quickly. So it'll just pop down and then pop back on. So it'd be in the 39s sort of areas, area somewhere. But um, yeah, if we've got five, if we've got five waves down here, then we can look for a retracement coming back to the 50, 60% uh, over here for that. I mean, that's the logical thing to do. And if we do have five waves down here, well, we could look at it as, well, an A wave, couldn't we? And then a B wave here and then down for a C wave here. Or we could look at it as wave one down here and wave two coming back. That would all be sort of practical at that point. So let's take, you know, I just wanted to point out that, um, you know, on the CME futures, there's a pretty clear five wave structure to the downside. That's all I'm saying, right? Um, when we go, let's go and have a look at a, a few counts in the, what we'll do today is we'll have a look at a couple of 
counts that, that could possibly be, just the practical ones. And then we'll also drill in here um, on the intraday and the tick chart. And we'll also have a look at Ethereum as well. And we'll look at where that you can go long from at this point. Okay, so coming to this particular chart here, it's a two day chart. Uh, so I just wanted to have a look at a few things. So the possibility of having wave three over here with an A wave here, a B wave up here, and then five waves down here for a C wave uh, down here for wave four, that's all possible. And as I just mentioned, we had a look at all of this down here as wave one in that case. Um, it's possible to have a running flat, as I mentioned, that would make, just to sort of put that into perspective, we don't, in the flat family, you know, we get the regular flat, we get the expanded flat quite a lot, but we don't normally get a running flat. So a running flat is where it takes the top out here and then has a very short five wave structure here. And then it moves off. So there's three types of flat corrections. Um, and we don't really see the running flat very often, but... You know, if it was going to apply anywhere, it would apply to, to, you know, Bitcoin because it's, you know, everybody's trying to get into it, you know. So we could have a running flat as wave three here, an A wave, a B wave and a C wave here. So that, that's possible, you know, so we can take that on board. Uh, the other uh, counters I mentioned where we've got the A, the B and the C, that's cool. <clears throat> we could also look at this as wave one here and we can count this down as a WXY and uh, we can go up from that point. So we could put that as a wave two in, in here. Um, and if that, you know, if, you know, <laughs> the thing is, let's just imagine for a moment that we could count it down as a WXY. We could count it down as five waves down. In both cases, we're going to see a move back up to the 50, 60% retracement level, wherever that may be up here, right? So if that is the case and we do see a rally going back up here, then it's we'll need to be really quite mindful of what that structure looks like as it moves up there. You know, and we won't know for a while because, you know, a, a wave two here is a five as an a, as a zigzag, which was which is likely, uh, you know, which is a five, three, five structure, which five, three, five structure would be the same as an impulse wave. So we wouldn't know until it turned and, and um, bogged us on the head, so to speak. So, you know, we won't know that until we get up here. So as it moves up here, just be aware that, um, you know, don't get because this will, at that point, it will be the point where everybody piles in and it turns, you know? So we need to be careful about that. The other point here too, which is worth mentioning, is that, you know, if we've got wave three here, well, we could put this here as an ABC for wave four here. And we, why can't we count this as one, two, three, four, five up here, like we have been doing as a wave one? Why can't it be the top of wave five here? What, what's wrong with that? of wave three of another larger degree of structure. And if it was a wave three here, then we're going to have a wave four that's going to pull back to this wave four here of one lesser degree. And then we'd be in some other big complicated correction here, we, a, a, like a triangle or something or something or other, you know? So the sort of speaking about the trading levels, which I like to do a little, you know, which, which I use. So when I look at, you know, to me, five is the second strongest number, the 50,000 is a major trading level five. So to me, this is just a correction across that level. And what we normally look for in across the level, if this is, this is the, the classic trading levels pattern, one is the most common pattern. So, and it could be, you know, it could be at a very small degree of fractal or very large degree of fractal like we're looking at now. So if this is the major trading level five coming across here, then we have the arrival, the reaction, and then we have the first high above the level. So this is where we are. We're back, you know, we're below the level here now for this. So we've had the arrival, the reaction, we've had the first high above the level, and normally we go long above here, then we come down to the second high, uh, or most of the time we wait for another entry over here, because this will also be a classic trading levels pattern in here. So this here would be the, uh, this whole pattern here would be in, in here. So it would be the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, an ABC pattern, and then we move in and go up at that point. So normally we trade to this point and then get back in over here, 
but the size of this structure is really quite large. So, uh, you know, there's a lot to do, keep us busy in between all of that. So, but if we're trading stocks, you know, I was trading up to $5, which is the same thing really, um, or $50. So, you know, we'd get out here and look to get back in over here. And if we could see opportunity, would build in at these points as well. Um, but that's just is the general pattern here. The only variation on on this is this one here, but this is not the case. Uh, so we don't need to look at this one. So it's really all about this. So we've got the arrival here, we've got the reaction, and we've got the first high above the level. So now we're in the corrective phase of this. Now how this is going to play out, is it the B, the one or the five of the three here? That's the question to ask. That's the bigger picture of it all. And if it comes back up into this space here, if we look at the, uh, you know, from this high to, to the 40,000, we'll take it to the low there. I think there may, there's a good chance for another low to come into uh, into place uh, here. So a little bit further down here, wherever it may be. So this will be the 50, 60%. So if the market moves up into this 50, 60%, we'll see when, if it, if we get five waves to the 50, 60%, five waves to the 50, 60%, then we know that we're bullish. If we only get three waves to this particular point, then we know we've got a, we, we know we've got a corrective pattern. So uh, that's all of that. So let's go in and have a look. Let's have a look at the short side and the long side within here. You know, just visually looking at it here, this move here, you can see that it looks like three waves here if, you, if you've got a developed a bit of an eye for things and, you know, nice strong third wave in here uh, and so on. Also too, while we're here, this is the 60, you know, from this low here to this high, this is the 61.8% here. So really, if it was going to be bullish, I thought that it would, you know, give us, uh, you know, a three wave pattern to that particular point and then jump back onto the 50 here and then move up from that point. And if it breaches, um, you know, if there is another little move down to the 39, this is down at 37, this is the 78.6 here. It's still okay for a wave two from one to two at that point. I mean, it's okay for a, a one and two right down to one point from this low here, technically speaking. Uh, so anywhere from 40 to 80% is kind of the thing for a wave two pullback really, isn't it? So it could be anywhere within all of that space. We, we can start working out, uh, you know, uh, intraday uh, extension relationships and so on. Um, but I find it's always better just to track the wave structure. Anyway, let's move in and uh, take a closer look. Um, I think I was going to cut straight through to the hourly chart and pick it up uh, here. Um, so, so the way I've got it so far here is that I've got wave three here, wave four over here. I should have that in green. Um, and then coming down for wave, uh, well, one and two and three and four and five here. So could I squash with one and two here? Can I squash this wave three in here and put this wave four here and squash this wave five in to get that, the five wave structure? Possibly, but it's rather small compared to wave one in that space, you know? So I can, and there's probably other ways to do it as well. So it's possible to have a low in here. Um, it's squashing it a little bit. And this wave four rally here is, is higher than the 38.2. It's not at 61.8%, but it's, you know, around the 50. So it's, that's okay for, you know, a, a coming on bouncing at such a large number here. And if that was the case, then we'd look at this as wave one here with an ABC back for wave two, and then moving down for wave three, four, and five, and finishing down here somewhere, and then getting back up on the level. And that would create the long trade to go to the upside at that point. If we were going to go long here, then really anywhere above above these highs would be fine. Um, this is all, when we talk about the trading levels, this is a medium level here at 40,000. Then we've got the minor levels, one, two, and three. So really it's just the Fibonacci sequence of numbers as one, two, three, five, and eight here. So we're using the sequence as a price ratio here. 
It's just the same as using, you know, your extensions. You, you know, we we look at the length of this one here and we pull it back to the 50, 60 percent retracement level. So it's the same. It's the same deal, but just using it as a price ratio. Um, so, yeah, we can have wave one here and two here and, and rolling over into wave three, four and five. That would all make sort of sense to me. If I was wrong, we could go along here with the levels here, one, two and three. I also call that group one. So if we get if this market comes back up and find support on top of group one this time around, well, then that's a safe place to go along from as well. You can also drop this down. Uh, here further you could drop it down to that one that one yeah if you're dealing here then you might as well just wait for support on top of the level here with a little classic trading levels pattern uh, waiting for the first high above the level and then go long or the second high or if you can get another one that's all all great but support on top of 43,000 is the um, is the ticket to ride to the upside at this stage and this is also a little bit like ethereum as well so if we call ethereum low in through here we'll look at this as a wave one here with an a wave here b wave here and a c wave here and if it does move up from here that's the point to go long at at that point there and the stochastics is setting up for that so that's sort of, you know that's half a silly chance of of that and that would be good now, uh, the, obviously, this is all counted different, differently down here. It's also counted as wave two down here as well. And you see it sitting on the 61.8% retracement level here on the 3000. So, yeah, that's all looking good. Can it roll down here? Yeah, sure, because I'm, I'm sort of forcing, you know, uh, the structure in, 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 uh, in here to, to finish off at this particular point. But we don't want to miss out on a long trade by any chance just because I've got my head stuck in the sand, you know what I mean? So that's the long trade there and that's the long trade um, over here as well. This move up through here, yes, you can count it as a as a as an impulse wave to the upside. So we'll have a just a quick look at that on a 15 minute chart here. So that's enough. Yes, yeah, so it's just 15 minutes here. So from the low here, we can look at this as wave one and two and one, two, three, four, five, the third wave, the fourth wave and the fifth wave here. But I don't think that counts very good like that. And then we can look at this as wave A here, B here and then five waves down here. So one and two here, then one, two, three, four, five for the third wave, some sort of ABC for the fourth wave to come in and down for the fifth wave. So we need a little bit more to uh, to, to play out here, so to speak, um, down to this point, uh, and then move up from that point. So that would be the bullish count to the upside and would be long and 43 there or long above any of these tops would confirm that. But when I count this here, we've got this spike in the market here. Now we could ignore the spike and just go with the, you know, looking at this as wave one here, that's okay. But even this little move here doesn't count very nicely as, as, as a five wave structure. You know, even if we looked at this as an A wave and a B wave and a C wave to this point, this B wave doesn't coming back. This this A B C here, the C wave doesn't count very well. Um, so if we pull this apart here on a um, on a tick chart, we'll go to a hundred ticks and then we'll go to um, then we'll go to uh, five ticks. So as a as a wave four correction, it would look like an A wave to here, a B wave to here, and then a C wave to here for a wave four. So if we look at this in a bit more detail here, if we go to the five tick chart, because we need to pull it apart, you know, we can't just sort of assume. Um, let's get some. So let's just pull this apart for a moment. So if you're going to call this wave one up here, then, you know, the, f the first thing that you can see here is that, well, we could look at five waves in this first move here. Then, then we've got uh, an A and a B and a C here for this. Then we could look at one and two here and then one and two and th well, you can get one and two and one and two here. Or you can put this one in. Yeah, no, oh yeah, we can go there. So we can go one and two and one and two here and then one and two and three and four and well, Four, five here for that but the thing about this is that from this low here to this high here there's not five waves here there's three waves so an a and a b and a c wave here so based on that this move here um, 
you know, just not five waves. I mean, perhaps you could, let me have a look at this way, splitting hairs there a little bit. I suppose you could look at this as wave one and two, and then one and two, and just sort of nipping in there in time. But this here looks like five waves down here as well. Does it? Let's have a closer look. Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five here. So A, B, C to this point, one and two. All oh, that's one, two, three, four, five. So that's the third wave. So one and two and three and four and five to here. Five. Yeah, it looks like a one and two. It looks like five waves. So yeah, calling it wave two is not really going to cut it. And then this here, this counts as five waves, so that's okay. So one and two here, and then we'd have one and two here, and one and two and three and four and five and four and five. So I just, I don't get five waves in the first move up here for this wave, the so-called wave one here and two here. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five here. That's pretty easy to see. The two, a nice sweeping third wave here. And this pattern across here, I mean, it just looks, as a wave four, it just suits better as a triangle pattern. So it's hard to put this here as wave three here, then wave wave four here, or even, because if it's wave four here, then we're only left with three waves up here, or at least overlapping structures at least, and that's in three waves. And if you put wave four here, then then you could do it, I suppose, one, two, three, four, probably all of one and two and three and four and five. Yeah, maybe an A and a B and a C. Um, obviously, um, yeah, so this just counts better as an A, B, C, D and E wave over here and then up for wave five. So I've just struggled to get a clean five wave move out of this. It just sort of counts okay as corrective. But look, it wouldn't be the first time I'm wrong. So if I'm wrong, I still need to make money. Um, so that's why I say that, you know, support back on the 43,000 takes us on the long side at that point. So this move down through here, I can count it as five waves of one and two and one and two and three and four and five for the third wave, fourth wave and fifth wave. And then this here is an ABC pattern, one, two, three, four, five for the A wave, the B wave and the C wave here. So we can look at it down for one and back for two here and then starting to move down. In that case, this was, this I've looked at all of this. This is all five waves to here, then an A and a B and a C for wave two, then wave one and two, so where we were yesterday somewhere in there maybe. So, we're, you, know, we're, you know, we're looking down further. We could probably look at this as, um, as I mentioned on the other video, we can look at, if I put this as wave three here and then four here, then we've got overlap with wave one here. So we may have to go down even further with this as a wave three here, you know. I mean, we could look at it as one and two and three and four and five, but it's rather a long five wave. But that's sort of okay too, because if wave one and three are the same length roughly, well, they're not quite there, then the extension will be in the fifth wave at that point. So we could look at it like that, um, but it's probably more likely a smaller one and two and three and four and five carrying on there. <clears throat> this is impulsive, this structure here. We've got one and two here. Um, what is it? and one and two and three and four and five for the third wave, fourth and fifth and one and two and three. So we've got this as, a, as an impulse wave. So we'll get some sort of, uh, another, and this is the ABC here. So we'll get some sort of, you know, equal length over here for this. But that's just probably the wave four rally at that point of something of this, I need to pull that apart. Anyway, look, the bottom line is is that I'm not always right um, and really it's just about sharing ideas and um, you know finding the right trade setup so on the long side above the 43 is the is the long trade and if that doesn't occur well quite simply well then we just need to be patient because we'll be looking for another move to the downside okay so just coming back to the hourly chart here for a moment so yeah it doesn't really matter what happens. If we get one, two, three, four, five down here, well, then we get that. You know what I mean? And then at least we know where we are. 
you know, because we've, you know, because I've done the work and, and you get down here and you think, well, um, uh, Pete may be right. Let's just see. And then even when we get here, we still have to confirm things. You know, if this is a, a third wave and we get another bounce here, which will probably be, be a bit higher and will overlap wave one or something silly like that and confuse us a bit. And then we get a move down here. But the trade for the long side after this would be a classic trading levels pattern sitting here. So the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, and then we'll look for an ABC pattern. And... Uh, and then we can go along at this point. And then the idea here would be when the, when the for, when the 41 becomes the support with another little classic trading levels pattern, drill in there and get it, and then another one here. And then if this number three here, if this becomes the support up here on top of group one, what that means at that point, if we get a classic trading levels pattern here which will be tested support and triggered in that means the market is leaving the closest largest number and the next level here the five the second strongest number will pull it up to that point and then there'll be a correction here as well with another little classic trading levels pattern and you can go along here and then there'll be profit taking in this space at 48 and then we've got to get back onto the 50 um, and then we need to see what the structure is up here you know all I'm saying is that don't think it's going to go to the moon at that point. We need to see if this is somewhere up here is the 61.8%. We need to see if we're going to get if we're going to get uh, three waves up here or we're going to get five waves up here. If we get five waves to the 50-60% as I mentioned, well then we'll get a pullback and then we can go up again. So we just need to be careful. We won't, we won't be able to resolve it straight away. That's the main point. That's what that's, you know that needs to be spoken as well. So that's it in a nutshell. Just a matter of being sort of practical um, at this particular point in time. Alrighty, um, I don't think that I need to add or confuse us any more than we already have. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's just sharing ideas and uh, other folks have got different ideas and that's all good because I think that all ideas should just go into the hat and um, and then, you know, flip them onto the table and then and look at them and, and put the highest probability ones first and then start to flick through them and, uh, you know, delete them and uh, and you'll end up sort of with the right one at the right time if you um, manage your risk and, and handle your exposure in the right way. Alrighty, uh, thanks for tuning in. Cheers.